to the venue where the title fight literally exploded this time last year. Will this year be a repeat? Welcome back to Formula One Grid Talk. This is episode 208, where we will preview this year's British Grand Prix. I'm your host, Tom Horrocks, and I'm joined today by Everything F1's Tom Downey. Hello. And from Paddock Pals, we have Warren Shaw. Hello. Thanks a lot for coming on, guys. If you enjoy this podcast, we would love it if you could leave us a five-star review on Spotify uh, and also a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. We'll give you uh, a shout-out on Apple if you give us a uh, if you give us a five-star review, and we'll mention it on the on the next show. And if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe to us on YouTube and click the bell to be notified when we go live? We have uh, we have over six hundred fifty subscribers now, and we're looking to to grow that as much as possible. We have loads of video content and articles and shorts for you to get your teeth into, uh, and give us a thumbs up as well, and leave a comment because we love to hear from you as well. So we're going to preview this week's British Grand Prix. Uh, it's it, it's uh, as already alluded to the uh, the championship fight literally just blew into uh, into into action last year, Tom. And uh, we'll start with with your with your team. Uh, Red Bull currently have 304 points and uh, a win and a DNF in Canada. Operationally, though, they do seem like they're sharp and on top of things. Yeah, after a somewhat rocky or perhaps inconsistent start to the season, certainly with reliability, um, Red Bull really appears to have got on top of the uh, well, certainly on top of the engine issues for, for the most part. Paris's DNF apparently wasn't engine related; it was transmission related. Um, so. Yeah, so maybe that's maybe that maybe that's another reliability thing we don't know. Um, yeah, but you know that they're, they're they're looking like the team to beat now. Um, I still think the Ferrari is a faster car, faster car, certainly over a one lap pace through qualifying. Um, there's a reason the players had four pole positions back to back, and and you know we didn't really get a proper look at um, at. Um, uh, Charles Pace in Canada because he wasn't trying that hard in Guadalupe because of the um the penalties he had coming. So it, you know it wasn't worth the uh, you know it wasn't worth essentially breaking something. Um but yeah uh you, you know coming into Silverstone this weekend, first of all, I hope there and I'm I'm not just saying this because I'm a Red Bull Max fan. I generally hope that we don't have a repeat of what happened last year. Not that I think we will. Um uh, you know, and I'm, and again, I'm not saying that because uh, you know because Mercedes are further back. Um, you know, I, ju- I just hope that for everybody's sake, that we don't have any accidents or you know, anything half as scary as what we saw yesterday. I also hope that Horner and um, Nui actually let it go uh, because I swear to God, if they bring it up this weekend, I'm just gonna I'm gonna roll my eyes so far back. I'm gonna look like something from The Exorcist. Um, yeah, so it's, you know they you know they. they I say this as a Red Bull fan, they need to get over it. You know, they can't change what happened. Um, and, you know, we all know how last year turned out anyway. So, uh, yeah, coming into this weekend, uh, I'm quietly optimistic, but I'm not taking anything for granted in terms of pace. Yeah, with Max Verstappen uh, technically has never actually won the British Grand Prix. He won the 70th anniversary Grand Prix in 2020, but the uh, the British version uh, he's he's yet to tick off. But he seems to be knocking out a lot of a lot of records this sort of last year and certainly this year. So uh, sure, it's only a matter of time. Ferrari, as you mentioned though, Tom, are a, uh, definitely looking like a very quick package at the moment. And uh, and Warren, the last year the last win for Ferrari was actually Vettel in 2018. Um, strong performance in Canada despite the result. How do you see their their weekend panning out? I, 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 obviously, like you said last year or last weekend with Canada, they didn't really have the two cars ready to go with the duel for Red Bull. I think it would be without the reliability issues, like something we could see like in Baku, where it looked like we were going to have a nice Red Bull Ferrari duel. They showed the speed on on the in the straight line there. Like you said, they have the best um one lap pace out there with how many pulls Leclerc has if they could just figure out some good strategy for once and then they could continue to just have the speed I really think that we could have a nice uh Red Bull Ferrari duel out there something that we've I feel like we've been let down a little bit since the first couple of races on how many they've really been going back to back with like each team having uh engine issues or gearbox last week just like issues that they've had we haven't really had that great duel other than the first couple of weeks of the season. So I think, I think we, we can get that here. And I hope like Charles and Max have that duel we had 
that was like 2018, right? When they kept going back at each other the whole race. Like if we have something like that, that would be just incredible stuff. And I, I and hopefully that's what we get. Yeah, as certainly the first few races we had lots of lots of duels, and it was just, and we thought if we're going to be in for this all season, we're going to be in for a hell of a season. But like you say, it has has tapered off quite a bit. We've not really we've not really had had that action, um, unfortunately. But uh, moving on to to Mercedes, uh, they've won eight out of the last nine British Grand Prix, Tom, and and showed strong pace in Canada. Any chance they can make it nine? I don't think so. Um... You know, I, I think Mercedes will probably have a decent outing this weekend. Whether they'll win, uh, I don't foresee that happening. Um, you, you know, you know, they're they're just, I just, I just, I just don't think that they're quite strong enough. Um, I think they will probably be higher up, higher up the grid. Um, however, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't see them. Uh, you know, I just, I just don't, I just don't quite, I, I don't, I don't see them challenging for for the win. You know, they might, they might sneak a, uh, might, might sneak a podium or something. Um, I just, uh, you know, but I think again, they might need a bit of luck to fall their way. Whether that's, um, you know, whether that's an accident in front of them or, or whether that's, um, you know, you know, you know, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, someone retires with reliability or something. I'm not sure. I think I think they will need a bit of something to go their way, and I'm not 100 percent sure if that will really happen. Yeah, I mean, with Hamilton winning so many of the last the last few Grand Prix, it's uh, it's certainly going to be a, a tall order for him to to come back and, uh, and 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 win another one here. But you never know; they they showed some decent pace in Canada, so there's there's a possibility there. A bit of bit of uh, unreliability, as we've seen a lot from the top teams. It's it, it's a possibility, but uh, it's. Like you say, I think it's it's fairly unlikely. But uh, moving on to uh, to McLaren, Warren. Uh, last McLaren was uh, victory here was in two thousand and eight with that Domilton Hamilton wet drive, uh, dominant D- dominant Hamilton wet drive. Beg your pardon. But Canada, the car was a, was all over the place. Bit of a diva. What's their chances of, of a strong result this weekend? I don't I don't know. It's, it's I think it's hard to tell. I've been reading about everybody's bringing like upgrades and stuff like that coming up this week. And they said that they're bringing like a small, a small upgrades while their teams are doing that. I think it's, I think McLaren this year has really had a uh, interesting, interesting season. Like they've really had just one driver that's been leaps and bounds better than, than the other that's Lando being better than Ricardo. So you're just trying to figure out, okay, can they get up there? Can Ricardo get to Lando's pace? That doesn't seem like it's possible. And then the car, like you said, last week in Canada, they have the old engine. It's so slow, this and that. It's just, I, it's, it's been a really mixed bag for me. And I, I, I like McLaren, but it's just, I don't really know what else they got. They said they're trying to figure out the setup and all that, all that stuff like that. I know it's their home race. You would, you would think that they would, they would get things going together. I don't, I don't know. I th- I think Alpine has shown more pace and more promise the last couple of races than and McLaren. And to me, that's pretty surprising. I thought McLaren was going to be the fourth car on the grid this year, so they're going to be in a battle with them. I I I don't know if they're going to be able to handle the uh, the the Alpines this week, and they they seem like probably like the fifth car on the grid right now. Yeah, I mean, obviously McLaren fan here, uh, so I'm obviously going to be hoping for a, for a a, a a return to the 2008 result. Uh, very unlikely, obviously, but uh, but yeah, you certainly what you say about Alpine looking like the stronger team at the moment. Personally, I, th- I think the McLaren looks like it's got an overall better top end, certainly in the hands of Lando Norris. But we're just sitting just sitting eight points behind McLaren. Um, we'll, we'll go to Alpine and, and joining us a bit late than ever. We've got uh, we've got Olivia Kairou here. Um, thank you for joining us, Olivia. And I'm just going to throw you straight in at the deep end to to talk about uh, talk about Alpine. They've uh, they seem to have a strong car on every track, whereas the McLaren seems to be a little bit more peaky, sitting just eight points behind McLaren. Should they be should they be well clear of McLaren already and be looking at closer to Mercedes, or are they kind of where they should be? Hi, thank you for having me, and I'm so sorry I jumped on really late. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but it's actually quite interesting that you mention that McLaren's are still ahead of Alpine because even that slipped my mind in my head Alpine's way ahead of McLaren's considering that they've had quite a few solid results a few more um it seems like a few more points finishes um last weekend at um the Montreal circuit both 
cars seemed really solid. I think the only downfall would be that um, the team dropped the ball with Alonso's strategy. I mean, finishing P9 behind your teammate in P... Wait, what did he finish? I think P... Was it P9? I think he was, he was, he was P9. He, he, the penalty. Yeah, he finished eight, uh, eighth, I believe, and then dropped to ninth after the penalty. Yeah, yeah so I feel like the team dropped the ball, um, especially with him starting P2, but the car does seem to, seem to be much more solid than, than the McLarens. Um, so it is surprising that they aren't above the McLarens in the standings right now. So hopefully for them and sadly for McLaren things take a turn in in Silverstone but yeah it's surprising to have them so well up ahead I mean Fernando finished P7 last year in Silverstone so hopefully a higher result if not a good one still ahead of the McLarens for them because they seem to be quite the solid um, runner for um, top of the midfield right now. Yeah, I think that's probably the, the battle that we need to be looking at. Potentially, if Mercedes get their act together, they could put a bit of pressure on Ferrari if Ferrari continue doing Ferrari things. But uh, I think the battle we're going to be looking at is probably going to be McLaren versus Alpine for the rest of the season. Uh, but just, just behind Alpine, the second of the A teams all, li- all lined up next to each other in the championship, we've, we've, got, uh, we've got Alfa Romeo. Uh, last time Alfa Romeo won, won a Silverstone Grand Prix was Giuseppe Farina in the first ever World Championship race. So uh, uh, I'm not sure we're going to see a repeat of that uh, 70 odd years years later. But uh, Bottas beaten Joe in every race so far this season, um, and uh, but, but Joe certainly showing some good pace this uh, this this last time out. Tom, sorry, I'm I'm a little bit uh, still on honeymoon. I think my, my, my mouth hasn't recovered yet. So uh, yeah, it's um, that came out wrong. Uh, I'm going to move on to you, Tom. So uh, Alfa Romeo, uh, how's their weekend going to go? I'm not going to comment on anything you just said. Um, yeah, no. Um, Alfa Romeo, I am still, I say still, you know, I, I am quietly optimistic. I think that's going to be my phrase of the podcast today. Um, because because uh, uh, I've I've been impressed with Joe Guanyu. He was on for a very good results in um, in Baku before I, before he had to DNF um, with with mechanical issues. You know he's um, you know he's 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 holding his own against against Bottas, and Bottas is playing the mentor role really really well. Um, it's just, you know the, the the car looks decent. You know maybe it's. It's it's a definite midfield car. Where in the midfield, I'm not quite sure because that midfield is so so tightly contested this year. Um, but you know, they 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 can definitely have a good outing. I I think we could see at least one car into Q3. Um, you know, maybe even both of them at the expense of. I don't like to say it, but maybe at the, at the expense of the McLarens. Um, you know, just the uh, I, I think. Uh, much, you know, I, I think the the thing for Alfa Romeo, Sauber, or whatever they're called, is um, it's going to be the power unit reliability, and the, you know, not even the reliability as such, because it 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 may well be, you know, that the power unit may well be fine, but there've been so many issues recently with the Ferrari power unit, and it's, um, I'm sure I was watching one of the F1 tech shows or post race shows or something. I'm sure it was. Uh, Sam, I can't remember his surname, but the uh, the the guy with the incredible afro who who hosts the stuff on the F1 YouTube channel. I can't remember his surname. I now. want to say Sam Collins, but I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, I I think you're right. But uh, anyway, I was watching I was watching something with I'm sure it was him and Lawrence Barreto, um, and they were saying that it was, it, it was either the MGUH or the MGUK. Um, I think it was the MGU. H because that's what harvests the the energy. Again, I can't quite remember. Um, but they were saying that. Um, Ferrari had, had introduced an upgrade in one of those, starting with Leclerc in Spain, and that's where they started having the reliability issues. Um, so, you know, so, uh, sorry, Alfa Romeo will probably be having sort of niggles in the back of their mind, thinking, "Oh heck, is the car actually going to make it all, all the way around? You know, are we going to be able to go 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 through the whole race?" You know, without us, you know, you know, having to say to our drivers, you know, please back off, please slow down, please, you know, this, that, or you know, or indeed, you know, say we're going to have to bring the car in and and, and retire it because, uh, 
you know, um, Joe Guan Yu, you know, I know he's not got an awful lot of points this year so far. I don't think that's an accurate representation of of how he's been this year. Um, you know, he, he's he, he's been, you know, Bottas has obviously taught him a lot. Bottas has also taught him how to be unlucky in luck, it seems. Um, you know, with you know, with with the reliability issues and what have you. So, if their car can hold it together for for the whole weekend, I think they could be on for 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 a you know certainly a decent quality and hope hopefully some hopefully some double points for them. Yeah, I think like you say, there's certainly that that Ferrari uh, Ferrari power unit has not done them any favors this year in uh, with regards to the to the reliability. And uh, Joe has definitely been the the the, uh, the the more unlucky of the two drivers. I think he's he's had he needs to improve in a lot of areas, but he is still a rookie. So uh, and a, a great finish last time out, slightly fortuitous due to the uh, the Fernando Alonso penalty. But even so, he had to be on track at the end there to to make it work. Um, so moving on to to Alpha Tori then, Warren, twenty seven points. A bit of a bit of a low points total from what we're used to in recent years from from AlphaTauri, but still their best result at Silson is is seventh place in in 2020. No points out last time. It's a bit of a make or break time for them, I think, for the season. Now, what what do you think? No, I agree. I think when you look down, you'd be surprised to see how how low they are in the standings for the overall season. It's it's like they obviously have Pierre back for next year. They confirm that, but that's also like where else is Pierre going to really go right now? I think he's kind of just in like a waiting game to get into a better car potentially. And Yuki, I mean, he's just a wild card out there. Like he just punts it off into the into the stands out of the pit stop, trying too hard. Like who who knows what you're going to get from that little guy out there um but yeah I, I i thought they would be faster this year like i pierre was great in qualifying last year just i don't really know what's going on i think the red bull engine is pretty strong we see that with max and uh with max and sergio's car on the top team so you know that but it just seems like the setup they haven't gotten it right so, something like that like you should i feel like alpha tari should at least be getting one potentially two cars to q3 most weeks than not, and they should be fighting for some points. Finish out strategies gone against themselves, but it's been I've actually been surprised how poor they've been this season. I, I thought they would be fighting up with with uh up around with Alpine up there, but they just they don't they don't have it this year. I, I don't I don't know what to pinpoint it on. Yeah, it, potentially a bit of a legacy in that they take a lot of stuff from Red Bull, but given that this this car is a uh, is a completely new concept for every team, they haven't got that opportunity and they've kind of maybe fallen back into their, their natural position. Uh, certainly, I think pace-wise, the, um, the, the, the Haas has had a much much better package than them, but yet they still trail mm-hmm. um, at least, was it 12 points behind them? And Aston Martin was certainly expecting bigger things. So I think that the car really is is an is a, is a eighth, ninth place uh, team car at the moment, which is a bit disappointing from from what we're used to in recent times. But Aston Martin will be will be just as disappointed with their performance, if not more so. Olivia and uh, and no um, best result in modern times for Aston Martin, just eighth place last year. Uh, last year tenth and twelfth uh, in the last race doesn't really show what the uh, what the pear flavored Red Bull can do, does it? Um, Aston Martin, no, it's it's odd. Um with Aston Martin, especially here in Canada, because I was at the race um, in Montreal just last weekend and no one was cheering for any of the Canadians, which was quite interesting because Stroll had quite a good race um, last weekend, which is quite, which was quite surprising. But it's odd because usually you expect not much from the team and I I'm going into next weekend with the same thought that not to expect much from Aston Martin. Um, it could be a wild card as well, seeing as they are home. Um, so I don't know. I really don't know what to be expecting from Aston Martin other than what we've been seeing right now or previously. Um, hopefully it's a case of they're bringing new upgrades, um, which could hopefully push the team forward. But there's not much to be really saying about Aston Martin at this point because it's not like we're receiving as much from them consistently on and on each weekend. I mean, last weekend was a good change of pace for one driver, Lance Stroll. But again, Vettel was on the same set of tyres for, what, 50 laps, which is quite strange, um, seeing as how he was also able to 
finish in what was it 12th which is interesting but I don't know there's it's there's not much consistency other than really close to the bottom so yeah yeah, I think Aston Martin certainly did drop the ball a little bit on strategy last weekend and, and uh, Vettel certainly had a shot of points at the end there had he been allowed to do what he was saying he wanted to do. Uh, my opinion there. Um, but but yeah, they've... I think they're kind of in that holding pattern at the moment where they've they've got these new upgrades. The car is clearly better. They they showed that pace in practice and looked like they they turned a corner. But then the race just got away from them and, and, uh, and potentially they, they could be right on the verge of, of setting out after Alpha Tori in that championship, maybe even Alfa Romeo if they if they continue to have en- engine issues. Obviously they've they've got the Mercedes engine so they don't have to worry about the Ferrari issues. But um but another car that, that does have that Ferrari engine and uh, and probably should be a lot higher than they are, which we're not accustomed to saying about a Haas Tom is uh, the ha- the Haas team, uh strong car for most of the year, but still ninth in the championship. And surely there the must be an an improvement on um, on their best ever performance at Silverstone this weekend on the cards, which was ninth place for Magnussen in 2018. Um, what, do you, what do you think about Haas this weekend? Could we, could we see uh, Mick finally get those first points? Um, I, f- I feel like m- us talking about Mick getting points is a bit like when we were talking about... Um, it's, it's like when we're talking about George Russell getting points for, for Williams. It seems to me that we're cursing it every time we're talking about it. So I'm, I'm not even going to touch it because I really thought he was going to get there in Canada and then, then he had the mechanical DNF. Um, yeah, uh, you you made a good point about Haas. You know, they are ninth in, in the championship, which, is, you know, for, for all the sort of promises we've seen from them this season, you know, their first rate, sorry, their first race weekend in Bahrain, you know, they look so strong. And obviously they're both cars in um, in uh, in Q3. They're locked at the third row. You know, for, for a team last year that was languishing at the back of the grid and would be lucky if they got a car off one of the back two rows of the grid, for them to have to lock out the third row on merit, okay, yeah, I know Perez and Leclerc weren't there, so... You know, so, so it, it, you know, it, it, it could have, it could have probably more likely been, been the fourth row. You know, had, had everybody been there, but they still did it. You know, they were, they were still there. Um, you know, they still got the cars out in the first place. Um, they've been hit by some terrible reliability and bad luck again. Um, the reliability, much like um, Alfa Romeo, you know, it seems to be power unit related. You know, we saw Mick retire. Um, and as 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 she came out, I want to make a bit of a point here, um, in that I think or I feel that whoever made the, the decision to throw the black and yellow flag for Magnussen was far too influenced by what other drivers were saying, because that front wing. You know, okay, right. I'm not an aerodynamicist. I never will be, and that's absolutely fine. I'm an IT nerd. Look at me. Um, but um, you no, know, but but that front wing, yeah, okay. There was a bit of damage, but it didn't cause a puncture. It wasn't having any lasting effects on on Magnuson's car. There was nothing looking like it was going to fly off. It, you know, it, it didn't appear to lose any of its structural rigidity. And if it would have done, Haas would have pitted him anyway. You know they, they wouldn't have wanted to, but they would have done. You, you know, so and 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 you know, K Max said it felt fine. The engineer said, you know, we can see it. it you, you know, they said obviously you're going to lose a bit of front wing downforce. I think it was the front right hand side. You know, but but they they said you'll be fine to carry on. Then Ocon comes on the radio and says, oh, we need a black and black and orange flag. That's dangerous. Blah blah blah. And you know, all the commentators were saying, you know, it should be all right. Then next thing you know. Blacking out a flag gets thrown, and and it, right, well, it, it just screwed Magnussen's race, especially then with the VSC coming out after. So you know, so so you know, so even though you know the cars around him were the, you know pitted under the VSC, they didn't obviously didn't lose as much time because as we all know, VSC you lose less time, you know, as opposed to a regular pit stop. So you know, so so that 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 was you know that 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 was like. That that was a bit of a sort of double and then triple blow with a second VSC for for Magnussen. So I yeah I definitely feel like well I say definitely you know I do feel like um, the FIA and whoever else were very very easily influenced in that decision. Um, so 
but you know that's that's my side round for, for the day. I'm trying to keep more on track these days, um, but my mind just goes ooh, please candy and wanders off. Um, with regards to Haas this weekend, um, one thing I don't want to see is grow is any of them doing a repeal of Grosjean in 2019 when he did a pit lane pirouette at the end at the end of the pit lane, and I still to this day don't know how he managed to do that. It's quite I think that's actually quite impressive to be honest. Um, you know I. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I want to see them do well. I want to see them. Obviously, you know, I do want to see them both get points. That car can score points. We've seen it. Okay, you know, you know, the, you know that 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 car can score points. We've seen its qualifying pace. We, you know, we've seen its decent rates pace. I don't want to curse it, but Mick was holding decent pace in Canada, and. Uh, and and you know Silverstone is a circuit which, which you know which he'll know from from his junior series and obviously racing there last year or all, all the rest of it. So hopefully we can see something good for for Haas this weekend. Hopefully, I'm not saying it's going to happen because I don't want to curse it, but hopefully we can see just, just something good for for them this weekend or next weekend. Uh, it just reminds me of the George House and predictions of points for George Russell all last season, and then it finally happened. So, uh, you know, yeah, the one time he didn't predict it, it happened, I think. So, uh, yeah, moving on to the, uh, the the last team in the championship, but certainly not what they were they were hoping for at the start of the season. Uh, Mr. Consistency, Nick Latifi, continues to pump in those 16th places with uh, absolute clockwork, and uh, and Albon just yo-yoing in and out of the points, just three points to the uh, to their name, Warren. And and then I, I saw a stat this morning said their their pit stop nearly a second slower on average than they were last year the worst team for pit stops which is not something we're used to hearing from Williams is this something is it just a bad year or is this something kind of more systemic that they need to get on top of uh, obviously it seems like the pit stops they got to figure something out there if they've been a slower consistently is slower so far I also do think like they have one tied they have one hand tied behind their back with, with uh, Latifi out there. I know we all joke at the Mr. Consistency thing, but they got, they have one guy in Albon who, who has really dr- driven, I think pretty well for what the car is giving this year, be, being able to get three points. He's the only driver that can really even try and get ninth or 10th or get out of Q2. Like Latifi's just shown absolutely nothing this year. Like it, it's so they pretty much have one driver out there. It's just, that's had their hands tied behind their back. I like, I think everybody's still trying to figure out the, out, out the new car they have upgrades. They said for this week. So I, me personally, I don't, I didn't really have high expectations for uh, Williams this year with, with just the driver lineup. Obviously I thought Alabama was going to have a pretty solid year. I think so far that we could, uh, we could say that he's had a really good year, but with Latifi, I mean, we've seen what he's been so far in, in uh, F1, his career. And it really has, hasn't been, it's been a big bag of nothing. So why should we expect anything different? So I, I think with what their what their driver lineup is, and then the car so far, is that this is probably the best they could. This is probably the best we're looking at right now. And they said they're bringing. I said major upgrades this week. Who knows? Everybody is, but uh, I mean, I I would just have to say they would have to figure it out for next year. We start looking to next year for Williams, and and off we off we go to twenty twenty three. Yeah, and their car is probably the most similar in concept to the Mercedes, which has obviously had all all kinds of problems all season. So mm-hmm. I think I, I'm I'm with you on that one. I think potentially it's uh, it might be time to maybe sack off the rest of this season and, and, and look to next season. There's going to be very pretty much stable rules, but maybe a change in concept, save the money off the budget, put it all towards next year's uh, design, and maybe try again. Uh, but I, I think there's 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 certainly some. Uh, inherent issues with that car but uh, you, you've heard what all the panel have had to say about the teams now we're going to move on to move on to predictions so I'll start with you Olivia uh, put you straight into the uh, in, into the, the hot seat then so predictions so if we pole position uh, your podium and uh, we'll, we'll come to the bold prediction after so just your predictions for pole position and the podium for the race for this weekend um, I think my pole position would be I think like a Charles Leclerc because he's been quite consistent with the qualifying situation, I guess. Um, I would also put both um, both Ferraris up in the podium. So hopefully it's Carlos in P1. That's me being very optimistic. Um, so a Carlos in P1, 
Verstappen P2 and Charles in P3, just to spice things up. But yeah, I think that's what it's going to look like. So certainly would uh, certainly would spice things up. Tom, uh, what do you think? Pole and podium. Pole. Uh, I think my boy Max is, is going to get it. Um, you know, I, I, I think I think the shove that that Red Bull has got. Um, I think you know going down the Wellington Strait, the Hangar Strait, the Hamilton Strait. Now, obviously that, that we have, um, you know, I, I, I think I, I think he will just just do it um, for the podium. Uh, I, I can say Max is going to win. I think I think Leclerc will come home second. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to change that. I'm going to, this is probably also going to be my bold prediction all in one. Um, I think Max is going to win. I think Leclerc is going to bin it because I think he's, uh, I, I, I think he's going to, uh, you know, because I think he's realized, oh, heck, I've had a massive championship swing. I need to get back into it. A bit like Silverstone last year. Um, you know, and uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, Thought you weren't going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. You're okay, no, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, so, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I think the clay will be, I, you know, I don't think it'll crash out, but I think he'll, you know, maybe spin or, you know, go wide or something and, and drop back through, through the field. And then I think... Um, I think signs will be at there. So I think signs will take P2 uh, and then P3. I think provided Perez's card doesn't chew itself, I think, I think he'll, uh, I think he'll finish P3. Okay. So that's certainly not going to explode into, into life, the championship based on your predictions. It's more going to kind of ex- explode into Max running away with it. But uh, um, fingers crossed. To- yeah, <laughs> moving on to you then, Warren. What's what's your what, what's your thoughts for the uh, predictions for the weekend then? Oh, I'm going to say uh, Leclerc is going to get pole. I mean, I think that's pretty pretty standard in the dry so far this year. So why should we uh, deviate from that? But he was he's not going to win. Max is going to win, and then Ferrari is going to continue. Just I think from pretty poor strategy. So we're I'm going to say both of them don't finish off the podium. We're going to get another Red Bull one two with Perez in second, and I'm going to say Lewis is going to knock back to back. Uh, podiums he's going to get third again and uh that's that's where i'm at on the podium wow okay yeah i've not actually looked at the weather yet i just thought i'd have a, have a quick look now as uh, as you're talking and it's looking like we might potentially get a bit of rain on friday uh early doors so hopefully that'll that'll get delayed on the saturday and sunday and uh, and uh, spice the weekend up a little bit back-to-back podiums for for lewis would certainly be it would certainly make the crowd happy in the absence of a hamilton win i, I think that's probably the, the best they can really hope for um okay so moving on to bold predictions then give us something to get excited about and look out for olivia what's your bold prediction I'm kind of inching towards a Hamilton win because it's Silverstone and I don't know. But I think my podium already was quite out there really because of just like the reshuffling, but it's also just me being optimistic and really, really rooting for signs after the debacle of last weekend. So I guess it's either or a Hamilton win um, as my bold prediction and... um, my podium is also looking kind of bold as well. So one of the two. <laughs> I hope that answers that. Okay. And and Tom? Sorry, I was reading a work email. <laughs> no. <laughs> bold prediction, mate. <laughs> Um, well, I, I think I think I've kind of already covered mine uh, yes. in, in the in the uh, you know, I, I I think Leclerc will a little bit overdo it. Um yeah, and and, and he'll perhaps squander a bit of an opportunity. Okay, and and Warren, your bold prediction? Uh, I'm going to say that George Russell is going to finish outside of the top five. I don't think he's done it so far this season. This mm-hmm. will be the race that he will finish outside of the top five. Okay, okay, uh, fantastic. So uh, we. Um... That's our predictions for the uh, for the for the British Grand Prix. Do let us know your predictions in the comments. We love love to hear from you. Have have a bit of a debate. If you're in the live chat now, stick them in the comments now, and we'll we'll debate them in the post show. Uh, I'm just going to go around now. Give you uh, give everyone on today has got other projects that they uh, they're involved with, and they come along here to to help us with with this show as well. So uh, I'll start with you, Olivia. Um, anything you want to plug? Um, the Chitane Crew podcast. We recently did a Canadian Grand Prix um, show and it was special because we were all there. So it was kind of like a 
first-hand situation. So the Chicane Crew podcast. Okay, and I think we'll probably get onto that a little bit in the post show as well. I'd like to find out more about that. Um, and um, I'll I'll go to Warren next, as Tom's just taking a drink of something. Uh, yeah, we have. Uh, I'm on the Paddock Pals podcast. My cousin Rachel and I uh, do that. We had uh, Sean Kelly, who I think you've talked to before. He's the stats guy. He was on yeah. a couple of weeks ago with our Canada preview. He was good. Uh, so we have that episode, and then we'll do a, a, a preview. But you can, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and go check us out at Paddock Pals. Cool. Fancy. Yeah, Sean's always a great guest. Look out for Sean at Virtual Statman on Twitter. He's uh, great value. Uh, always, always likes to debate uh, with anyone. Doesn't matter who you are. Uh, okay, Tom, uh, do you want to give a give a plug for everything F1? Yeah. So as I'm sure most people are more than aware by now, I'm part of Everything F1. Uh, you can find us across all your favorite social media platforms: so Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, TikTok. Um, I don't even know what people use these days um so any of your favorite social media platforms uh you can find us we're either at join the f1 or, or at everything f1 um we have our website everything f1.com youtube channel everything f1 and also our um our podcast which is the everything f1 podcast which is available on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and our website Okay, and if you want to hear any more from me, I'm at Tom Horrocks F1 on Twitter, and I do the Monkey Seat podcast with my mate Carl. Uh, and I hopefully will be a bit less podcast ring rusty uh, <laughs> uh, next time we do it. It's been a few weeks since I've done this, so I've, uh, it's amazing how how quickly you forget the most basic things. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's it for this show. Uh, we will do a post show where we we'll just chat about a few a uh, few of the topics around F1 and any comments that you've put in. If you want to hear more from Formula One Grid Talk, we have a huge back catalogue of shows where you can get, you can get your teeth into those. I'll race shows do all go out live on youtube uh, straight after the event and the audio version will be up slightly later on which you can get on amazon fire spotify google Podcasts, apple music verbal on the studio and pocket cast we also run a patreon so if you want to help us continue to do what we're doing then please consider donating to us and everything that we raise from that goes straight back into the show to help your experience you can also support us by buying merchandise from the uh, f1 chronicle store like this this lovely mug i've got here uh you can get that all at f1 chronicle.com slash store we will be back this saturday to review qualifying from the british grand prix so we will see you then bye everyone Okay, so great. Moving on to the uh, to the to the post show then. Uh, we only a couple of questions. That's mostly Jared Bradley. Uh, he says hello to everyone. So that, that's all good. Uh, K Max front wing. Didn't Ocon admit to him after the race that uh, he did it deliberately? Is that something I must have missed out? I didn't catch any of the post show. Any any comments on that? It just goes out to everyone. Uh, I think I heard something. I I honestly can't remember offhand. Um... I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if it was done deliberately. You know, you know, you, we know what F1 personnel, drivers, t- uh, you know, team principals, and anything in between. We know they like for whinging about things, um, and that's not aimed at anyone. That's aimed at all of them, by the way. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, my team, Red Bull, they are guilty. You know, of a large degree of it. Um, I'm going to Google that. Um, uh, I, I, who was it? Who wrote the comments? Sorry, was it? Was it was it Br- Jared Bradley mentioned. Jared about Bradley, it. Ke- yeah. Came out, came out Didn't Ocon admit to him after the race he did it deliberately? Yeah. So, so we'll, go on, Warren. I, I I looked it up right. I'm I have something up right now, and Ocon on the radio said that he's. You could see it hanging out, and then afterwards, Magnuson said that Ocon had come up to him after his race, laughing, saying that he said that. Uh, he said that to influence the uh, FIA, and then Magnuson was like, "I was just talking to Ocon now, and he was joking that he told the FIA it was really bad." So, I guess that's that's what he meant by that. Right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That that makes a bit more sense then. Um, other thing I'd quite like to talk about is this this Gasly contract as well. It's uh, it, that's yes. come out the blue a bit for me. I I did not expect to see Gasly remaining at AlphaTauri, but I guess it's probably just just no no other options for him. And I think maybe his time might have might have passed him now. And that big team, I'm not convinced is ever going to come. Anyone's thoughts on that? I wasn't that surprised for some reason. I guess it's the same thing as um, I think Tom said. There's not. There's nowhere else for Gasly to go. Um, I guess it's in AlphaTauri's best in- interest to keep Pierre Gasly. I mean, who else are they going to go around picking from the Red Bull Driver Academy with 
Yuri Vips and his big mm. um, screw up recently. So I <laughs> mean, kind of like backed into a corner. There's not much that they can be doing right now um, to ensure that the team is actually afloat. Uh, there's still a lot of work to do with uh, Yuri. I mean, Yuki Sonoda. Sorry, I work with someone whose name is Yuri, so I'm all constantly. Um, but yeah, uh, there's not much to do um, other than keep things the way they are with Pierre. I'm pretty sure he will uh, continue to give in good results, but there's not much uh, surprise for me for some reason. Yeah, it seems like the sensible choice. It just seems, uh, I just thought maybe Pierre would have, after disappointingly missing out on, on the Red Bull seat last year when Perez got the renewal, maybe he would have looked for something else and got something lined up. But obviously, whoever looks after his, his affairs or himself, he hasn't managed to line anything up. Um, any thoughts on that, Warren? Yeah, where where else would he where else would he go though? Like, what would you Turn consider away. going to be a like a upgrade from Alpha Tauri? Like, I know, like we said, they haven't been great this year, but he's not he's not going to Alpine. He's not going to McLaren. Like, I he's he's kind of stuck right now. I know there are a bunch of like rumors. I don't know, probably not true, but oh, we could get a Gasly for Ricardo. So it's like, I don't think McLaren McLaren's going to stay in house if they if they make a change. I think when they make a change, it could be Herta or, or Pato Award. I think so. Where Gasly, like he's really got an arm tied behind his back. Like he's really got nowhere to go. Like you said, he might have missed his big chance because he's not getting back in the in the top Red Bull seat, and and then no other team. Who, who else is who else is gonna who else is gonna take Aston Martin? I got who knows. I nah. he's just kind of. He's stuck, but they're not going to take. He's stuck. He's stuck. Honestly, it must be so hard for him being stuck in a in a midfield Formula One team. It must be a hard, hard life for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love I'd love to hear about a bit more about your experience at the weekend, Olivia, at the Canadian Grand Prix. Because I know that's quite a quite a big deal, and uh, and uh, yeah, just like just like to hear sort of a bit more about that and and what it was like being on the ground there at at the race with these new cars. Do they look different to, to how they would have looked in previous years? Um, it was my first race actually, so okay. it was kind of really exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, however, I will say, um, Thursday was my first day. So I did the pit lane walk and it was like a lot of hustle and bustle jostling around with everyone cause it's a three day. So everyone's kind of wanting to see what the cars look like. They're assembling them and everything. Um, it. I, I, the cars look exactly like you'd expect them to look from seeing them live on TV and just around and about. But I will say they aren't as loud as I expected them to be. Um, so there's that. But once you, that was when I was sitting on the grandstands. But when once you get down to the floor and a barrier is the only thing separating you, that's when you really feel the, like, pushing through sound barrier like mm. crushing sound um and that's when i was like oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> but um it was interesting uh i got to see a few drivers saw lando uh ocon he's really he's tall very yeah. tall Sorry. He's a bit, a bit of a bean pole isn't he <laughs> yeah he's really tall uh george walked past uh daniel ricardo uh, so it was kind of surreal at that moment, but it was really fun. I obviously I'm still kind of like spaced out and I'm catching up with news um, as it comes and previous things that have been happening, so I can be up to date still. But it was it was a lot. It was fun. You really do feel. Um, I it's interesting because Sunday was my favorite day because it's quite hard to follow on the grandstand because uh, there's no commentary and when it is when it is or like when you can hear it it's in french so it, it's hard to follow the cars are still going past the commentary is not um you can't hear it very well um but for sunday was my favorite day because there's always a car passing by where you are um and you get to kind of have a sense of what must be going through the driver's heads because like stroll um leading the DRS train. For him, he's having a good time. The race is going swimmingly for him, I mean, compared to other previous races. But then the people behind him are struggling and you can kind of feel the desperation and 
the need for them to get past. Um, the same with Carlos and Verstappen. Verstappen's driving his heart out and Carlos is also driving his heart out. But you kind of feel like his need to get ahead and and all of that. So you do feel very immersed in the situation, which I was quite surprised at. And yeah, I had a good time. <laughs> Yeah, I love being trackside and, and seeing them moving around and, and it, you get a much better sense of how much they're moving around than, than you do on television. It's uh, I've not I've not been able to get to a race since 2018, 17, something like that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it, yeah, it's certainly something I want to get back to. Oh, where did you where did you sit and how miserable was it on Saturday? Because it looked quite, quite, quite bad out there. Oh my God. So the weather here is really strange because right now it's really humid, but Saturday was completely out of nowhere. 12 degrees. It's cold. It's I'm on the grandstand really high up and the rain is pouring down. I'm in a raincoat. And the thing is it's, it's 12. So um, the wind is also really like slapping me around and, I'm really wondering why am I here? It's really hard to follow because again, commentary, you can't really hear anything. So you're pulling it up on your phone and there's still delay and a lag and um, the times are pounding through and darting around and it's just really hard to follow. So that's when I was kind of doubtful and I was not really upset, but um, there needs to be a lot done for people who are watching. Um, so that they can kind of follow, get a sense of what's actually happening, other than just seeing the cars whiz past you. Because, I mean, it's exciting to see them, but to not see them with context is another thing, you know? So, yeah, no, Saturday was horrible. I will not lie. It was hard to get out of bed. Seeing the clouds in the rain and thinking that you're going to have to sit through that for such a long time is terrible. The mud, the, ooh, was not fun. <laughs> not fun. Yeah, just I just realised actually, uh, my my background at the moment is from when I was in Canada in 2016, and uh, and, and Lewis oh, Lewis yeah. got a victory. Um, I just completely forgot about that. That was not intended at all. Um, yeah, that was an absolutely miserable Friday. Uh, absolutely torrential rain and that was the time when Lewis Hamilton went out on track and Rosberg they were the only two that went out because it was too dangerous and uh, Hamilton went straight on right into the barrier that I was uh, sitting in front of or behind rather in front of that would have been scary but uh, yeah so uh, he actually hit the barrier right underneath me so I've got a video of it happening uh, actually, so uh, Mick and Perez um, retired in my corner so the cars mm. are just oh, sitting no. there for the rest of the that's where I sat. I think turn eight, nine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think this is turn two is my picture there. Yeah. That's where I, that's where I sat for the race. But for the for practice, we sat in the stands. That was that was brilliant. Great, great experience. Um, Warren, have you ever been to an F1 race? Yeah, I went to Austin last year. First, oh, first race. amazing. Um, yeah, it was it was hot. It was like 90 on Saturday and, and hot on Sunday. The they didn't really prepare for how many people needed water and stuff like that. So we were in turn no. uh, 18. So like I would Saturday, I remember waiting in line before qualifying to get water for like 45 minutes. So I bought like four or five bottles because I went with my mom and dad. So we went and then Saturday, Sunday for the race, we were, like I said, turn 18. I missed the one overtake in our corner because I was waiting <laughs> to get water. I was like, my dad was like, you missed the one overtake. I go, great. But the thing about where we sat, it was uh, we had a TV screen right ahead of us, so we could see that, and they had some in, in commentary. But no, it's I there's I had the same thing that you said, Olivia. I thought the car the, the cars were going to be a lot louder than they were. Like I've been to an Indy car race, I've never been to NASCAR, but the Indy car cars are loud. I know it's different, but I was like, this isn't as loud. It's still loud, but it's not as like loud, like ear ear piercing loud that that you would think. And it was. Austin was, it was cool. Like, it's cool to see them on track. They just need to get some of the fan experience things figured out there. And then it would have been a better, uh, a, a better experience. Like, I think that's a lot of thing F1 from what I've read is I don't know how seriously they take like the fan experience. Like I've, I've, I've read a lot of issues lately about fan experience. So it's interesting. I think more so in North America because it's, yeah. kind of, it's the beginning of, a surge and people getting involved with F1. They're still building grandstands and everything. So 
I don't yeah. know all through um, even in Europe and places, but definitely in this side, on this side of the world, things are shaky. It's something yeah. I just want to pick up on on what you said, Warren, about, about the noise. So uh, yesterday I, I was at Goodwood Festival of Speed, which you know I, I don't know if uh, don't know if you're aware it's a huge festival in the UK. Um, it's basically like Glastonbury for motorsport, um, and uh, and I, I was I was extremely fortunate. I was in hospitality all day, um, so I, I, had, I had fantastic seats and all the rest of it. And and. I, and I heard or saw NASCARs going up the hill, and you know, the noise is so visceral. And then I saw I saw Nigel Mansell go up in his old in his old Ferrari. I saw um, there were uh, I think there was a 2012 Sauber that that, that went up the hill. Um, you know, there, there was uh, there was there, there was some old, old V10, some old V12s, and small V8s, uh, and then a couple of the more modern cars. Now hearing them all, excuse me, I'm so sorry, hearing them all in person, you know, somewhat back to back. The V6 cars, they sound decent, to be fair, but they just don't have that same kind of scream or that wail of, of the V12s and the V10. They just, you know, you know, I, I know their technology is incredible, but it's just not quite the same hearing them compared compared to. I don't want to sound like one of those, but I, you know, I, I do agree with what you're saying that you know that. The, the experience and certainly from the sort of fan experience, you know, I wasn't sitting there going, Oh my God, that sounds amazing. So I was going, Oh, cool. <laughs> when, 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 when I heard the, um, when I heard the V6 cars go up. Yeah. I should say I'm not complaining. Oh, I was going to say I'm not complaining that it's loud. Like I I'm fine yeah. with that. Like if, if you don't need to worry, you, I would say you could get wear your plugs if you want, but it's probably not, it's not, it's not necessary needed. like what like it's not needed with the other engine so i'm i'm totally fine with that i just thought going by like okay i thought i thought it would be louder than than what it was yeah i don't think you you can't really um you don't really know what what noise is until you stood on a hanger straight for v12 going past you full chat about 10 feet away from you that's uh, right when they're at absolute full throttle at the highest speed they're ever going to be at all season probably that that's you just you you don't hear it you feel it like your whole chest just reverberates and it's it's just it's some some feeling but yeah if anything probably a little bit too loud and even earplugs there they're too loud but yeah like you say with the v6s you don't necessarily have to wear earplugs unless you're right next to them so but yeah it's as you say we're not going to get into that whole conversation of uh of uh you know f1's too quiet or anything like that it's i think it kind of moves on and but uh, yeah, I think that will uh, will wrap it up there. So thank you very much, all of you, for joining us. And thank you, those who stayed for the post show. Um, looking forward to a great British Grand Prix. We'll see you soon.